April 29, 1945. Dachau concentration camp in Bavaria, southern Germany, just 13 kilometers northwest of Munich. After 3 p.m., Heinrich Wicker, Untersturmführer, or SS assault chief, agrees to surrender the camp and its more than 500 men to Brigadier General Henning Linden of the 42nd Infantry Division of the United States Army. The SS commander in charge of the site, Martin Weiss, has fled upon hearing about the imminent arrival of the Americans. Of course, the scenario the Americans encountered was horrifying. And by this, we mean thousands of prisoners in an advanced state of malnutrition and extremely sick, dozens of train cars loaded up with rotten corpses, and other examples that show how far human cruelty can go. Consequently, it would also be a psychological test for those first soldiers who suddenly came across all of this. You have probably heard this story hundreds of times, but there's an aspect related to the liberation of the Dachau concentration camp that is not as well known to the common public and that was initially hidden by the U.S. military. Even today, more than 70 years after the end of the Second World War, this story is wrapped in an hour of mystery in which there are conflicting versions. What actually happened may never be fully known. Do you want to find out more about this story? And do you want to hear the different versions that year after year make this controversy grow? Then join us in this new episode of Military History, where we'll talk about the Dachau Massacre, when American soldiers executed dozens of German troops who had already surrendered, and in which several freed prisoners took the opportunity to take revenge on their captors by their own hand. Are you ready? Then prepare to travel back in time. It was early afternoon on April 29, 1945. American troops belonging to the 42nd Infantry Division were passing through the small town of Dachau on their way to Munich. Suddenly, they realized that something was wrong, especially because of the smell, which was nauseating. Some soldiers thought they were near a chemical factory, others that garbage or animals were being burned until they came across an abandoned wagon on the railroad tracks, and then another, and another, for a total of 40. What they found when they opened the doors of those wagons, more than 2,000 corpses piled up, added to the thousands of walking skeletons that had survived the cruelties of Dachau, would remain forever etched in their minds. Although it was already known that there was some type of Nazi installation in that area, the expectation was that it would be an SS training base or a conventional prison camp. They never imagined encountering an extermination camp of such magnitude, and many soldiers couldn't bear it. This is where the acts of violence and disagreements related to the Dachau massacre begin. But why are there such discrepancies? Mainly because, according to the testimonies of those soldiers present during the liberation, the account of the events that took place varies a lot. A clear example of this are the words of an American doctor of the 45th Division, Colonel Howard Beekner. Several years after the event, he would claim that more than 500 German POWs were executed en masse by American troops. Another description of the event was published by the Jewish historian Abram Sacker, who indicated that some of the Nazis were immediately rounded up and executed along with their dogs. There was even a statement from General Dwight Eisenhower himself that said, Our forces liberated and cleaned up the infamous concentration camp in Dachau. Approximately 32,000 prisoners were released. 300 SS guards were quickly neutralized. On the other hand, and perhaps the best known testimony, is that of Brigadier General Felix Shotgun Sparks, one of the first officers to enter the field, leading the 157th Infantry Battalion of the 45th Division known as the Thunderbirds. His version of these events is portrayed, among other examples, in one of the episodes of the recently released animated miniseries The Liberator. 
According to the episode, the brigadier gave orders to confine 50 German soldiers in a partially closed area, normally used to store coal. Shortly after leaving to confront a group of SS guards who had not yet surrendered, he heard screams and machine gun fire. Immediately, he returned to the scene and prevented the slaughter from continuing. The soldiers responsible claimed that the prisoners were trying to escape, but Sparks did not believe them, mainly because the corpses were all lined up against a wall. About these events, he would write years later. That incident was the one that gave rise to several rumors that a large part of the Germans captured in Dachau were executed. Nothing could be further from the truth. The total number of guards killed that day in Dachau did not exceed 50, with 30 being probably the most accurate figure. The truth is that months later, after several witnesses dared to denounce the situation, the U.S. Army launched a confidential investigation only made public in 1991. This process was about to put all those involved in court-martial, Felix Sparks and Howard Beekner among them. However, all the charges were eventually dismissed by the renowned General George Patton and the investigation came to nothing. The magistrate in charge of the process, Colonel Charles Decker, concluded in late 1945 that, while there had probably been a violation of international law, in the light of the conditions which greeted the eyes of the first combat troops, it is not believed that justice or equity demand that the difficult and perhaps impossible task of fixing individual responsibility now be undertaken. Finally, we must also say that the victims of the Dachau massacre were not only executed at the hands of American soldiers, there are numerous testimonies that assure that the prisoners took advantage of the opportunity and the confusion of the Germans to take revenge on the guards, prioritizing the most sadistic ones. These executions, unlike those perpetrated by the Americans, were carried out with bare fists or by means of various elements that were within reach, such as shovels or sticks. Concerning the situation and the Germans killed in revenge, Prisoner number 39272 of Dachau, Walenty Lenarczyk said, All these years we were nothing more than animals to them, until we were born again. Himmler had ordered the SS to kill all the prisoners before the arrival of the Americans. And when they arrived so quickly, it was really like our second birth. After six years, the released prisoners were no longer just numbers and were finally called by their names again. We are now coming to the end of this episode, and we would like to ask you, what do you think about the acts of the Americans who executed German soldiers who had already surrendered? Do you agree with the result of the investigation? Leave us your comment below, and don't forget to subscribe and activate notifications to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history. Thank you very much for joining us, and until the next video.